Hey guys, Taco Mage here. Before we get started, I thought it would be important to share a change with you in mechanism that doesn't automatically apply to the game because of the way that the change is enacted. And that is, the fuel wood heater has actually been buffed since I did my last video. In fact, it was buffed partially because of my last video and partially because I asked for it to be buffed. But anyway, the new default value in the config file for the fuel wood heater has been increased from 1 to 4. But because it is a config change, it means that if you are upgrading mechanism, that config change won't actually happen because it's going to respect the config file that's already there. So in order to get the update, you have to either delete your config file or go in and look for the field that says heat per fuel tick and increase it to four. So that's just kind of a, a little update on the fuel wood heater. I thought it would be best to open with that so that you guys know what the deal is and wonder if you wonder why your numbers that you're getting for this boiler attached to this fuel wood heater are different than mine. So yes, fuel wood heater has been buffed, but you'll need to update the config file. And with that, on with the show. Hey guys, Taco Mage here, bringing you another Mechanism version 9 Spotlight. Today we're going to be taking a look at the steam boiler, specifically the thermoelectric steam boiler. Now, before we get into actually boiling steam, let's take a look at how this thing kind of goes together and some of the numbers associated with it. Basically, when you're putting one of these together, there is kind of two parts that are important. One is this lower area, which is your water chamber and your boiling chamber, which has your superheating element as well as space for water, if you so desire it. And then you've got this pressure disperser layer, which separates your water layer from your steam layer, which will go up here. Uh, this pressure disperser layer has to be across the entire level of the multi-block right here. And, but the superheating element only needs to be at least one block and can be as many as you like as long as it's, you know, uh, below the pressure disperser layer. Now, the interesting thing about these is that each layer has a volume for capacity based not only on the blank space, but also the casing space. So the volume of water that you can hold here is actually 16 buckets or 16,000 millibuckets of water per block, including this casing layer. So everything on the bottom, everything on the sides, the glass, all of that, and even the valve is considered part of the case or part of your volume layer. The only things that are not counted for your volume are your superheating elements. So in order to calculate how much volume you're going to have, you just have to take uh, your total block volume of the area down here and then subtract out how many superheating elements you have. Above you have your steam. Now your steam volume is actually 10 times that of your water volume. That is to say 160 buckets per block, which is 160,000 millibuckets per block. And just like the bottom layer includes all side casings and the top. Now the pressure disperser layer is actually unique in this multi-block in that it doesn't count for volume on either side. It's essentially just a no volume layer, including the casing that surrounds it. So this entire layer through the multi-block will have no volume associated with it. And if you want to check my map, math, we can come over here and look at a completed one that's exactly the same size. It's just 4 by 3, sorry, 4 by 5 by however tall this is. I think it's 4 by 5 by 7. And if we look in here, I'll Click on the statistics and you'll see the water and steam. I did the calculations. I know I'm right on this one, but if you want to do them yourself, you are completely free to. So the other important number is the superheating elements. Each superheating element in your multi-block structure actually adds 100 buckets of steam production per tick. And that is maximum steam production. You're not automatically going to get that much steam production. That's just your capacity to boil water into steam. So for each one, 100,000 millibuckets per tick or 100 buckets. So now that we've gone over the numbers, let's take a look at what I think is probably the best setup for the boilers. And that is, this is the setup that I would say is pretty much all you're ever going to need from a boiler in Mechanism 9. Now I say in Mechanism 9 because if Mechanism 10 creates something that produces a lot more heat than any of our current options, then this is definitely going to change. But in Mechanism version 9, this is what you're going to want to build, which is just a three by three base uh, that's four blocks tall and it's got the one disperser on top it's got the super heating element down below and otherwise it's all just sides and you know valves uh, the reason that this is going to be your most 
likely design is that there are very few options to heat these things. In fact, there are three options and only two of them are really worthwhile. The first option is to just use our friend the heat generator. You just throw your bucket of lava on top, pump the heat in, and you get a nice stable about 20.5, 20 21 millibuckets per tick of steam. And that's the reason also why you don't want, need to necessarily make this thing so big because you're, you're producing 20 millibuckets per, per tick of steam with that, you know, super heaters in there you have a maximum boil capacity of 100,000 millibuckets per tick. You would need a tremendous number of heat generators to get this thing even close to, to its boil capacity. So you're not really going to need anything bigger than this. Your other likely option for heating one of these things is our friend the fuel wood heater. And as I mentioned, this thing has been buffed, so it's actually producing twice as much steam as our heat generator. That is to say, about 40 millibuckets per tick. And again, you would need a tremendous number of fuel wood heaters in order to come anywhere close to your 100,000 millibucket per tick limit. Your last option is, is the non-option, and that is you can just throw a resistive heater on there, pump some power into it, and it'll heat up your boiler. And as you can see, I've got this resistive heater set for 250 RF per tick, and the 250 RF per tick is producing a grand total of about 6.5 millibuckets per tick of steam. That is nowhere near enough steam to even come close to recouping that 250 RF per tick. So this is a non-viable option. There is no free lunch here. You are not getting perpetual motion with a resistive heater. Sorry, guys. So that's pretty much why I'm saying that you're never really going to max out even one superheater because you're going to either be using fuel wood heaters or heat generators, which, as I said, you're going to need a lot of. And by the time you're thinking about bu building that many heat heat generators, fuel wood heaters, whatever, you're probably going to be thinking about a reactor. So again, yeah, you could do this if you needed steam just, you know, to have a whole bunch of steam, but it's not viable. So if we come over here, we can look at what I think is the basic introduction or introductory setup for the thermoelectric boiler. Over here, we've got our heat generator with lava on top of it. We've got our boiler here with water being pumped in. If we run around back here, we'll see that it's being pumped in via a just an electric pump. That pump was actually started on the heat generator because the heat generator still produces RF even with it, the lava on it, or sorry, even with it putting its heat into the boiler. It actually still produces enough RF to have started the pump. Uh, once the pump was started, then this turbine here actually started producing power and was able to keep the pump on, which is why I removed the, the wire that used to connect it up to the heat generator. And the reason that you want to eventually pull that off the heat generator is that this extra side of lava does increase the heat, which in turn increases your steam generation. So anyway, I've got that one heat generator producing heat. That heat is creating our 20 millibuckets per tick-ish of steam, and that steam is just going into a very, very small turbine. And that steam is producing 114.28 RF per tick. And it, if we even take into account the the loss from the pump, that's coming out to be at least 100 RF per tick, 100 and probably closer to 110 RF per tick of gainful power. And that's just running off the heat generator. And that's a single heat generator. So that's actually pretty powerful. That's a lot of power from just one heat generator. If you then take this boiler and then you start adding, you know, fuel wood heaters and some more heat generators, you could actually be producing quite a bit of power. And also note that this is not actually a very well-optimized turbine. I just put it together in order to show kind of proof of concept here of what your minimum setup would be. In fact, the actual minimum minimum setup would be to bring this level down one and to do it with just two turbine blades. But when I do the turbine spotlight, which will be next, we'll discuss why this is actually a much better setup. But yeah, that's basically the boiler. It's not as complex a block as maybe the the evaporation towers, or even the turbine is, but I think it's actually a very good mid-game power generation source for mechanism. It certainly, as you add more heat sources here, starts to eclipse the, the more popular, or at least more widely used uh, wind turbines, which, again, are a great power source, but this, I think, has a very good potential to overtake that as the mid-game power source. And that's, when I say mid-game, I mean everything before building a reactor, really. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the boiler. Again, simple block, but uh, I think quite powerful. And I want to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one, which will be our friend, 
the turbine. Later, guys.